All right, this time what we're gonna do is average rate of change of a function on some different intervals. So the first thing to realize, that's why I did several intervals. What we're trying to say in any given interval, using the same function, the average rate of change can be different depending on the interval you're in. So the classically, average rate of change is one of the more important ch sections in the first chapters on functions because the limiting process of average rate of change is going to be the definition of derivative. So this calculation is extremely useful, especially when we do the A, A plus H, that's setting us up. We're doing wax on, wax off, and Mr. Miyagi, and we're doing karate before we show you what we're actually doing. So <clears throat> for the first interval, I have A is one and B is five. And so on the interval one, five, the F average is the way that I denote it most books just are going to call it something else but I'm going to call it f average this is going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a every time this is a and this is b that's what you have to sort out for yourself so I just put those in there if you want once I know what the formula for f average is basically I take my function <coughs> and I build the pieces before I put it into the machinery and then calculate so f of 5 is going to be 5 squared plus 2, which is 27. And f of 1 is 1 squared plus 2, which is 3. And so what we're going to get here is f average is going to equal <coughs> 27 minus 3 over 5 minus 1, which is... 24 over 4 which is 6 so the average rate of change on this first interval is 6 now on the next interval 5 10 a is 5 now which was the B last time we're overlapping we're actually doing if we maybe I should have drawn this it wouldn't be to scale anyways not to scale or with the function so our function is going to be 1 2 going to be doing that so the first one we were finding the average on this interval the second one now we're going to find the average on this interval we're not computing the areas I'm just showing you the, the intervals that we're computing these on area will come at the end of this course <laughs> so what we're going to do now is again I need f of 10 which is 10 squared plus 2 which is 102 and I need f of 5, which I already calculated once. If we remember, don't calculate it again. It was 27, 5 squared plus 2. This is the first rule in math. If you calculate something once, be lazy. And why would you calculate it again? I already computed that in the last one. So <clears throat> I have my two values. f average is going to equal f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Regurgitating the definition helps your brain memorize what this is so you're not worth thinking about what it is on the exam. And then I put in the pieces. I had 102 minus 27 over 10 minus 5, which is 75 over 5, which is 15. Notice that the average rate of change on this interval was larger than the average rate of change on this interval which makes sense even if you look the function is increasing drastically and the values are getting bigger and bigger so the average rate of change should increase as we go along in intervals now the most important one is the interval a a plus h for general we're going to use the limiting process and put h to zero and create a derivative eventually so one last time we have the same function again this parabola x squared plus two and then we're going to compute this on an interval a a plus h what we're actually doing is we have this parabola we have a and we have a plus h and then this will be f of a and this one will be f of a plus h you can't really see that but what's going on is now what we're saying is the F average is going to be rise over run at the slope of the secant line joining these two points basically and that's what we're going to create rise over run so every time we do that F average is equal to F of B which is A plus H minus F of A over A plus H minus A 
and this is where you start realizing and forgetting that this is the slope of a secant line and we push it because the A's always cancel and you get just H on the bottom and then you can't see that it's uh, change in Y over change in X. So for our function, F of A plus H is A plus H squared plus two. This pen seems to be dying. Which is A squared plus two A H plus h squared plus 2 and so what we're going to do is we're going to use the formula and put this expression that I've calculated now into there and simplify. So f average is f of a plus h which was a squared plus 2a h plus a squared plus 2 minus f of a a squared plus 2 all over H because we canceled the A's. Once we do this, the idea is even in this calculation or when we do the definition of derivative, you'll see in those videos, I'll remind you again. If you did this correctly and did all of the calculations correctly at this stage, when we distribute the negative, anything that doesn't have H in it will cancel and simplify. So the negative goes onto both of these terms. A squared cancels with A squared and two cancels with two. So this becomes two A H plus H squared over h. Now because everything that didn't have h is in it cancelled off, I can factor h out of the top. Don't try and cancel like this. Factor one of the h's out. That's the safest way to do this. And I'm going to get 2a plus h over h. Now that it's factored out, now I cancel it. Also that's not a zero, that's a one. I see a lot of the times that's been zero. So 2a plus h f average on that interval is 2a plus h. Eventually what we're going to do when you see this is we're going to compute derivatives of this when the h will go to zero and we'll say the derivative of uh, x squared plus 2 is 2x when we actually take the derivatives with respect to x.